Buenos Aires, 1951. Argentinians jam the streets. Some crowds swell to more than two million people. They have a single purpose, to convince one woman to run for political office as vice president. She considers joining her husband's ticket, who's running for a second term as president. She decides no. The crowd's reaction says it all. They love their first lady, Eva Perón, also known as Evita. There is still debate as to Eva's original birth date and name, but no question that Maria Eva Duarte's childhood in the small railway town of Los Toros was filled with poverty. Eva's escape was the cinema and acting in school plays. She wanted to become an actress. At age 15, she moved to Buenos Aires and hit the stage. Over the next few years, she found work with theater companies, was cast in several B-movies, received a contract as a radio performer, and started her own entertainment business that produced radio programs. Eva first met Juan Perón, a colonel and government official, in early 1944. She had no interest in politics, they had a 24-year age difference, and his peers disapproved of her inferior background. Despite these obstacles, they married in late 1945. Juan wanted to become president of Argentina, and Eva was very active in his campaign. She won over the impoverished masses with her emotional, plain-spoken words on her radio shows. And in 1946, Juan won the general election. Eva became first lady, and she remained a powerful ally during his leadership. She used her role to fight for women's suffrage and aid the poor. In 1947, Eva went on a goodwill trip to Spain, later called the Rainbow Tour. Her mission was to improve diplomatic relations between her country and those in Europe. She was warmly received by the heads of state and handed out money to many poor children. Her tour was widely publicized throughout the world and earned Eva celebrity status. Back home, she unofficially ran the ministries of health and labor giving large wage increases to unions. Controversially, she created the Eva Perón Foundation from union contributions and cuts from the national lottery. But she personally oversaw that her foundation created thousands of schools, hospitals, orphanages, and negated class inequality. Eva also helped pass the Women's Suffrage Act and founded Argentina's first significant all-female political party. But Eva never held official government power. She ultimately turned down pleas to run as vice president because the army opposed her and because she was suffering from cancer. Eva made her final public appearance at Juan Perón's second inauguration in 1952. She passed away a month later and received a funeral usually reserved for a head of state. 
Evita's story became immortalized in books, films, and a famous musical. She remains a fascinating and powerful symbol for Argentinians today, and a reminder that power in the right hands can improve the lives of millions. Thank you.